Hello, Malinley Butler, founder of Eden House. I just got off an amazing nearly two hour, nearly two hour workshop masterclass, one of the boot camps in the boot camp series Counterfeit to Jesus with my bestie in Christ, uh, Katrina Ruth. Hello, hello. As you're joining in, feel free to say hi, hello. Let me know where you're joining in from. And if you're catching the replay, hello. And just got off of that boot camp. The series Counterfeit to Jesus has been amazing. The first boot camp that we did was all about um, coming out of the new age deception. And today, the second boot camp in the series that we did was all about coming out of that self exaltation. And um, if you're an entrepreneur in the personal development world, this runs rampant in that in that arena. And how do I know? Well, I did it for really a really long time. Hello, hello, Tracy. Um, I did it for a really long time. Like I self exalted myself and I created a lot of success in my business. So it's not that there weren't results. There definitely were results that were happening, but um, eventually the fruits start to sour. Eventually things start to take a turn. And what happened in, in my experience and part of my testimony is yes, the finances were there. Yes, there were a lot of results externally, but internally um, I was dying. And I was also on a fast track to burnout. Uh, my marriage was falling apart. My children, I was sacrificing so much time that I could have, be spent, could have been spending with my children all in the name of building my empire, you know, building my empire and yielding my empire and, you know, hashtag queen. And, um, you know, I, I, I get sick to my stomach thinking of it now, but I used to call myself the alignment queen. And I, I used to also say that I anointed and appointed myself. I'm like, talk about self exaltation at its finest, self exaltation. At it's finest. So today the workshop that we just did nearly two hours was so Holy spirit led Holy spirit fire. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, because God gets all the glory in everything that I do. Um, it was really, really delicious. If you're curious about Counterfeit to Jesus, the boot camp series, if you have just come out of the new age or you're in the new age and want to explore what's this whole Jesus situation, um, if you've just come out of the new age, if you've just come out of like doing it all in your own way and you surrender to Jesus or you're kind of like on the fence you can just uh, comment yes or private message me and I'm happy to give you the details. It's pay what you can, by the way, it's pay what you can. So whatever you can pay um, to participate, it's entirely up to you, whether it's $1 or more than that. So, you know, I wanted to come on here today and, and I, I think I titled this knowing your authority in Christ, I believe is what I, I titled this. So a lot of people, myself included, that come out of the the new age or, you know, the place of self exalting, putting yourself on that pedestal, you know, like I am the guru, I am the authority, I'm going to the guru to get the answers, the guru in this area. And I'm like saying it cheekily, but that's, you know, what I used to do. I'm like, I'm the guru in this area. I'm the go to in this area. I mean, goodness, that is so much pressure and such a huge burden for anyone to carry. And we as human beings are not designed to carry those things, right? The only person that can that is meant to get all the glory is God, period, end of story. We're not meant to carry the burdens. In fact, in scripture, it says, cast your burdens to me, cast all of your burdens onto me and I will support you. I will carry you. Um, I'll actually pull that, that scripture up right now. Cast all your burdens. Um, yeah. Yeah. Psalm 55, 22. Various translations will say various things. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall, right? It's, whew. here's another translation. That's the New Living Translation. Here's the New International Version. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. He will never forsake you. In him, I am, I, my identity, who I am, I am who he says I am. I am not who I say I am. I am who he says I am. And then I affirm and declare that. How do I know who he says I am? My God, Jesus, how do I know that, he, that what he says I am? 
by his word. I literally am a drowning woman in his word, in God's word. That's how, that's how I know who I am in his word. And this is really key and pivotal because if someone says to you, oh, you're this or you're that or whatever, you know, because whether people are going to like, oh, you're, this is what would happen in the past in, in my business. Like, oh, you're so amazing. You're amazing. You're the best thing ever. You know, I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. I kind of like this, right? Because our heart is wicked. And when we come to the Lord and we fully surrender, we submit, he cleanses our heart. Actually, he takes our heart. This is in Ezekiel. He takes our heart of stone and turns it to flesh. He takes our heart of stone. This is in Ezekiel. Ezekiel, um, heart turned into flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. A new heart also I give you and a new spirit. I will, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. So, You can't trust the heart. You can't trust your feelings. Feelings don't have intellect. Feelings aren't smart, right? But we, I come from this world, right? This new age world is what I came from, what I was saved out of. And the self-exaltation, it's like, follow your heart, make your own rules. Don't. Follow your feelings. Don't. They don't know. They lie. Who do you follow? You follow who God says you are. You follow who Jesus says you are. And how do you know who he says you are? You read his word. I'm a drowning woman in his word. (laughs) I read his word every morning. That's how I know. And you get scripture and you clothe yourself with it. You blanket yourself with it. You wash yourself with it. You cleanse yourself with it. Yes, feelings and your heart lie. They steer you down paths that will continue to to deceive and to fool you, right? When my alarm went off really early this morning, I didn't want to get up. I didn't feel like it, but I got up because I am committed to seeking my Lord, my God, my Savior. I'm committed to spending time with him, right? I'm committed to seeking him because... Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me. So I don't really feel like doing it. I don't really feel like getting out of bed, but I want to seek him. I want to be in his presence because today we're talking about um, knowing your authority in Christ You know your authority more in Christ. Yes, when you read his word. Yes, when you blanket in his word. Yes, when you're drowning in his word. But when you get in his presence, when you're in his presence, you will know your authority. Hello, Jackie. When you're in his presence, you will grow in your authority in him, not in me, in him, not in yourself, in him, in no one else. This isn't about exalting your name like, I am the best guru ever. No, my friend, you are not the best guru ever. Get off the pedestal, surrender and submit to the Lord Jesus. Let him take care of everything for you and probably the mess that you've made if you've been saying that you anointed and appointed yourself like I said, or that you're calling yourself the internet queen of whatever thing that you've now decided you're the queen of. No, that has a spirit of Jezebel. In fact, Anyone that's listening in that can resonate to this or their heart's racing a little bit or you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this. I've been controlling. I've been manipulating. I've been self-exalting. I've been contorting. I bind the spirit of Jezebel. I bind the spirit of Jezebel and I command her to leave out of you now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of control, the spirit of, oh, what else? The spirit of control, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of control. I bind them. And if this resonates, just arms up. I bind and the name of Jesus command the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of control to leave now in Jesus name, in Jesus name. I don't have authority. Do you see how I said in Jesus name? I don't have authority. Jesus has authority. I am nothing. He is everything. Glory to God, right? By the way, more, more deliverance, deeper deliverance than eat. Like those are just light deliverance. If you're ever feeling like there's a spirit of something like that, Simply, you can say this over yourself. I bind the spirit of XXX. I bind the spirit of control. And I command you to leave me now in the name of Jesus. Um, And you don't have to like scream it or yell it. You can just say it firmly. And just breathing out. (sighs) Breathing out. (sighs) Coughing out. Hold hold your belly and just cough out. Um, 
last night my son actually had a temperature and I don't come into agreement with sickness because sickness, God is not the author of sickness or disease. And so I didn't come into agreement with it. And, and I said to my son and I always ask for partnership because by the way, Jesus wants to partner with us, right? He wants to partner with us. We have a loving, intimate God that wants relationship with us. He wants to partner with us, right? And so we partner with him. And so I said to Jack, Jack, do you want Jesus to heal you? He's like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I said, Jack, would you like prayer? He's like, yes, I would like prayer. And I said, great. We come out of agreement with the spirit of sickness. We come out of agreement with the spirit of fear, uh, the spirit of fever, <laughs> the spirit of fear too. We come out of agreement with that. Um, we come out of agreement with the spirit of dis-ease. We come out of agreement with the spirit of, because he said his tummy was hurting, the spirit of tummy bug, right? We come out of agreement now in the name of Jesus. I bind these spirits and command you to leave him now. Now, um, by the way, I did that when he was awake, part of it, and he was able to just like, he just breathes, and sometimes he just sneezes, starts to sneeze. And I've also done this with my children um, where they're like kind of half in, half out. They're like, yeah, mommy, pray, yeah, cool. And they're just like, all of a sudden they're, I don't even have to tell them or they'll start sneezing and releasing it and glory to God, all God, not me, all God, not me. I don't take any credit for any of this stuff. Um, his fever broke, his fever broke. I have another testimony of that too, where my son came down one night and he had like these big bug bites that were like completely swollen all over his arm. And I said to him, sweetheart, do you want Jesus to heal you? Because I just thought well, we get to come out of agreement with that. And I did the same process, right? Came out of agreement came out of agreement. I said, we come out of agreement with spirit of sickness, spirit of infirmary, spirit of uh, these massive bugs, like spirit of bug bites, spirit of whatever. We come out of agreement. And in Jesus, spirit of sickness, we we come out of agreement. And in Jesus' name, we bind you and command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Um, within 45 minutes, all of them went away. I actually sent some pictures to my clients who were, were really needing a boost in their faith. I mean, the gift of supernatural, having supernatural faith is definitely something that God has bestowed upon me, but I also lean in and activate it, right? Like I lean into it as well. Um, and so, you know, one of my favorite stories in scripture is Mark 4, uh, 4, 39. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And so you're like, wait, what's going on? Well, what was going on in this story? And I'll, I'll share a little bit more with you is that in this story, Jesus and the, the apostles were on their way to support and <laughs> support, support. Uh, there was a man that was demonized and he was like wandering around and he was hopeless and the, you know, the village kicked him out and he was just wandering around completely tortured and he had um, many demons in him. Lesion is who came to the front, which means like lesion is like 6,000 or more. And so they're on their way there and Satan is trying to stop them, right? So he sends a storm and all the apostles are like, ah, Jesus, like, oh, this is crazy. Um, and Jesus is in the back just like sleeping, you know? And so he gets up because he had the authority to rebuke the storm. Yeah. And so it says, and he got up and sternly rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind died down and there was a great calm, a perfect peace and peacefulness. He also goes on to say in scripture that in his name, you will have the authority to do things greater than he has even done. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, when you fully surrender and submit, say the salvation prayer, get baptized, have our Holy Spirit filled, have that same spirit living in you. Greater things than he has done. So we have authority in Christ on our own. <sighs> No. In Christ, yes, we have authority in Christ. And it's about knowing that position as a daughter or a son in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And so this morning when I was in my my prayer time with the Lord and just being with the Lord, uh, which is the first thing that I've been doing, I actually have committed to doing it for the 40 days. And I believe I'm on day 29 today. And then today I actually started day one of a 21 day fast and taking prayer to the next level goodness. It's so good. It's so good. When you, when you commit to those kind of things, like when you seek, you shall find, when you knock the doors open unto you. 
And so I'm in prayer this morning and he said a couple of things. One of the things that he said, he said, Malene, Jeremiah 333. And Jeremiah 333 is a really good one. So 33, three, Jeremiah 33, three. I'm like, by the way, if you have your Bible, pull it right out. Or if you have your Google, you can just pull it right out. And in Jeremiah 33, three, he says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and mighty things, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Call to me and I will answer you. I will give you the solution. I will tell you great and mighty things. You don't have to know the answer. You don't have to solve all the problems. You don't have to have all the solution. And in fact, you don't. I do. Call to me and I will reveal to you. So when you're self-exalting, when you're putting yourself on pedestals, when you're like, I am the guru, I am. It's like, I am not. I am not. He is. I am not. But when I seek him, he will reveal things, great and mighty things to me. So I was sitting in my time with him this morning and he says to me, you know, Malene, just keep it simple. <laughs> he says, just keep it simple. Tell people like, keep it simple. Keep it, keep it simple. Stop overcomplicating it. I rebuked the wind and I said, peace be still. I was like, yeah, you did say that. You did say that. I rebuked the wind and I said, peace be still. And there was a calmness. So it doesn't have to be these like lofty prayers and it's like all this madness. It's simply, oh, you know what? This atmosphere, I'm not in agreement with it. I'm not in agreement with this anger that I feel in the atmosphere. You know what I'm talking about when you're in someone's home, and you're like, something's off. Or maybe in your own home, you know, I have toddlers, they're running around screaming. I'm like, yeah, I'm not in agreement with chaos. Yes, it's okay for them to play and laugh and all the things, but there, there's a difference. There's a difference when I can tell that the enemy is trying to get in and, and cause disruption or chaos. And I say, oh, we come out of agreement with the chaos. Peace be still in Jesus' name. Peace be still in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus could just say that because he was Jesus. I'm saying it in my authority in Christ. You feel me? So I come out of agreement with the space, the atmosphere that is not supportive. I come out of agreement with the chaos. I come out of agreement with the madness. I come out of agreement. I rebuke you. I break the agreement. I am no longer in agreement. Because at some point you do come into agreement with the chaos, with the noise, etc. And here's what it looks like. Oh, my kids are so annoying. Oh, I have toddlers and it's just so crazy all the time. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm going insane. I feel like this. I feel like that. And all those things that you're speaking over yourself are actually cursing yourself. They're speaking curses over yourself. And you're coming into agreement with the atmosphere, with the space and place of chaos. So I could just imagine in that boat, the apostles being like, whoa, it's crazy out there. They're coming into agreement. And Jesus is like, oh, you have little faith, rebukes the wind and says, peace be still. And then it was. So in Christ, you have that authority, not without him, but with him in partnership, right? So you come out of agreement and you say, oh, I come out of agreement. I come out of agreement with the chaos. I come out of agreement with disruption because God is not the God or author of chaos. He is not the God. Oh. <laughs> that was one of my kids. He just literally scared me. He's like, boo. <laughs> I love you. I come out of, I literally jumped in my seat. I'm like, whoa. Um, I come out of agreement. He's so cute. With chaos, I come out of agreement with the disruption because God is not the author of chaos or disruption. He is not the author of, of craziness. And as I'm saying that, the Holy Spirit's like, well, you know, sometimes God does disrupt. Okay, yes, you're true, right? Convicted on that. Sometimes God does disrupt, but God is not the, the author of chaos or confusion. Those are the those are the correct words. God is not the author of chaos or confusion. Okay, but he might disrupt things in your life, particularly when you fully surrender to the Lord and stop doing it your own way and stop doing it the self-exalted way. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the correction. Right? By the way, when God corrects you and convicts you, it's not because he's trying to hurt or harm you. Most people have been rejected in their life and they take it as hurt or harm and they don't even like the word obedient. But actually what's happening is because he loves you so much, he's convicting you, he's refining you. Right? One of the first things that God did when I fully surrendered to the Lord was burp, pluck curse words. <sighs> Goodness. It's all over scripture, by the way. Curse words, you don't want, they gotta go. They gotta go. Um, 
But I used to say that it is who I am. It's part of my identity. I'm a Jersey girl. I curse, you know, like it's part of who I am. No, it's not. That's not who he says I am. Going back to the beginning of this, who does he say I am? How do I know who he says I am? How do I know who God says I am? By reading his word, by drowning in his word, by coming to him in his word. By the way, any, any morning time with the Lord that you do, or any time that the Lord is speaking with you when you're a Holy Spirit filled disciple of Jesus, when he's speaking to you, never will the Holy Spirit ever contradict God's word in the Bible. Never, never will not do it. So if there's a contradiction happening, it's like, oh, well, God has evolved his word. No, no, it's another spirit. It's another spirit coming in. So he's like, keep it simple, Melaine. It's simple. I rebuked the wind and I said, peace be still. I rebuke the atmosphere of chaos. Peace be still in Jesus name. I come out of agreement with chaos and I declare this atmosphere peace. I loose upon this atmosphere peace. I release on this atmosphere peace in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I'm partnering with Jesus to shift the atmosphere. I'm partnering with Jesus. Right? And this is what he wanted to do. Part he wants and he wants to do. So when he came down and was working with the disciples and the apostles, he came down in partnership. Right? One of my other favorite stories is um when he meets Simon, who eventually becomes Peter, he renames him Peter. Um, Simon Peter, Simon is a fisherman, right? And he was out all night fishing and caught not a fish, zero fishies, zero, zero fishies. And so he comes and then Jesus, long story short, <laughs> Jesus was preaching on the beach and he uses his empty boat to be the pulpit to speak to the people, right? which is really interesting because it's like, where in your life do you need to make space for Jesus to step in, okay? Um, and then he says to Simon, all right, we have some fishing to do, like cast your net out, right? Go out and cast your net out. And Simon's like, uh, how about you do the preaching and I do the fishing? How about you do the preaching and I do the fishing because I'm the fisherman, you're the, the preacher, you're the teacher, I'm the fisherman. So how often in our life are we like, I know what I'm doing, self-exaltation. I know the way. I don't need you in this area. Hey, Jesus, you know what? I need you in this money area. But all these other areas, I got it. Hey, I need your help with this marriage. But all these other areas, I got it. I need your help in the... He wants every area. He's either Lord of everything or nothing. He wants all the areas. He wants the money. He wants the marriage. He wants all the areas. He wants to help you in every single area. What was I saying earlier? What was I saying earlier about casting your cares? Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Psalm 55, 22. He will never let the righteous be shaken. He doesn't want Cast your cares, cast your burdens, and he will take care of you. He doesn't want one care. He didn't say cast one of your cares. Cast some of your cares. Cast your cares. Full stop. So he says, Peter, you know, let's go fishing. At your bidding, Lord. At your bidding. And then he gets out there. Now, be really clear. He could easily... This is a guy that just I just told you said, peace be still. He rebuked the wind and said, peace be still. He calmed the storm. He could easily say, fish, get in the boat now. But he wants to partner with us, you see. And he said, Peter, cast out your net. He wants to partner with us. He wants relationship with us. This isn't about religion. This is about relationship. He said, Peter, cast out your net cast out your net. And it took faith for Peter to cast out his net. It took a lot of faith, in fact, because remember, he was just out the night before fishing all night, defeated. And number one, the location that Jesus brought him to fish is not normally where they fish. And number two, he was the, he was the expertise fisherman. And number three, it was the wrong time of day to go fishing. And when they were pulling up the nets. They were about to burst. An overflow, a supernatural overflow, impossible, but possible when partnered 
with Jesus, when partnered with God. Yeah? So we need to know our authority in Christ happens when we partner with him. And the more we reside in him and abide in him, we understand our authority in him. And presence grows the authority and the power that we know we have in our identity in Christ. Make sense? I just created a new workbook today, actually, right after I had my morning time with the Lord. This is what happens because he then gives you something. It's like, okay, here's your work for today. It's not like, what am I going to do? I'm like, what would you have me do at your bidding? What would you have me do? Who would you have me be with? Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? And he's like, oh, I'd have you write this out. I'd have you make create a workbook. And so I've created a little ebook workbook. I'm just looking for it on my computer. Ebook workbook. What did I call it? Ah, shifting and commanding spaces. Shifting and commanding spaces. So it goes into this with some scripture. It goes into this in detail with some examples. Okay? So if you want that, it's completely free. You can just comment free or private message me and I'll send it to you. And it's just step by step of what I just walked you through today, right now. But I wanted to come on here live and just have a conversation about this. Share about this. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Free. I'll send it right over to you, Tracy, once this ends. Um, it's so important. It's so powerful. Being on fire for the Lord is so different than having lukewarm faith. And in fact, lukewarm faith is not going to get you anywhere good for eternity and even in the, in the short term. When you're on fire for the Lord, when you're running with him, when you're seeking him out, he, did you just finish reading it? Amazing. Um, and when you're seeking him out, he will reveal more to you. Uh, Jackie is in my kingdom leaders, which is a mastermind. So if you're an entrepreneur and you are all in for the Lord and you're on fire for him or you want to be on fire for him or you're like coming out of the new age or you're coming out of self-exalting and you really want a sacred community that gives you the God foundation, the Jesus foundation, and then we do the business stuff. After we have that foundation solid, Kingdom Leaders is the place for you. You can just private message me or comment leaders here and I'll, I'll send you the info. And Jackie's in my Kingdom Leaders. And if you're in Kingdom Leaders, um, they have access to this this uh guidebook that I created that's already in there for them. It's amazing. There's another piece of scripture I want to share with you guys and talk about, and it's been coming up for me, and I'm just going to sit for a moment. Um, I mean, there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. I'll send you that info too. John 14, 21. Another favorite of mine. Like another favorite. I'm like, oh, I could sit here all day and talk about it. I'm going to sit here for a little while today. Um, we're going to go into prayer again too. So stay, stay around. Um, okay, so this is John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he... It is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So what's he saying? He's like, well, if you're obedient to me, if you keep the covenant with me, if you love me, I will continue to reveal myself. If you seek me, I will reveal myself to you. I will manifest myself to you. I will show you. I will reveal more things. Um... Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. This is Jesus talking, right? So good. There's another one that I want to show you guys or that I want to talk to you guys about. That's not the one. That's not the one. But it is similar. Uh, 
and we just talked about this on the um, counterfeit to Jesus number n- number two boot camp number two boot camp I am who he says I am oh which I love I am who he says I am which I've been telling you about which is Exodus three fourteen. Um, Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10, the heart is deceitful and, and desperately wicked without God. Mm, 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 mm. I think it's Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. Let's, ha- let's have a look, shall we? Mm. No, it's not that one. All right, well, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to me if it's it's meant to be revealed. Maybe I wrote it down over here. But basically, it's like, you know, the more you seek him, the more he will reveal. The more you seek him, the more he'll reveal his secrets. You know, he'll reveal he'll reveal the answers to things that you're looking for, the solutions of things that you're looking for. I mean, there, there's so much... For me, for so long in my journey prior to surrendering to the Lord, I was looking for the supernatural. And be clear, there is a counterfeit supernatural that the enemy is serving up, and it's all over in the New Age. But there is a the the real supernatural that nothing can compare. So you know, the power that the enemy gives you is like a little little grain of salt, little little grain of salt, which, by the way, is eternal condemnation, eternal hell, um, and and so many other painful things that will come along the way. And God's supernatural power is like. Pfft. But the thing is, it's great to hear me talk about it. It's even better when you partner with Jesus. When you partner with him and he shows you the power and he shows you and he reveals himself to you. If you're on the fence and you're like, I'm not sure, I don't know if I want to surrender. Simply ask Jesus, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Would you reveal yourself to me? And he will. I had a client of mine that gave her life and her heart fully to the Lord earlier this year. And in a master class, I was talking about the same thing. She's like, all right, Jesus, I'm ready. She heard a knock at her door. By the way, her husband and her son were both sleeping. Jesus is literally on the other side of the door waiting for you to let him in. Waiting for you to let him in. Knocking. He doesn't have a handle. You do. Because he wants you to let him in. It's partnership. It's not dictatorship. You know, God God put the, the tree in Eden because he doesn't want to rule by force. He wants you to choose him. He wants you to choose him. He wants you to partner with him. It's not about, you know, a lot of people come out of the new age or out of self-exaltation. They're like, oh, do I have any gifts? Like, was you know, um, I, I had these, you know, different things that I was doing and maybe I'm not that amazing. It's like, no, well, you're you in Christ Jesus are the apple of God's eye. You are chosen. And. When you come home and fully surrender to the Lord, a lot of the things that maybe were like a gift, you were just using in the wrong way. So, for example, my mantle of evangelism, which the Lord had revealed to me and also was confirmed by many different people and actually prophetically was spoken over me again last night for like the 90th time. And I'm like, yep, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um I was prostituting that gift of evangelism when I was self-exalting, when I was in the new age world, right? Through manipulating and controlling and enrolling people into the wrong thing. Well, now I understand that gifting and that anointing and I'm using it to lead people to Jesus, right? So when you come out of self-exalting or labeling or appointing yourself in whatever area you feel is like your area... When you come out of that and you fully surrender to the Lord, it's not that you don't have gifts or anointing or mantles. You do, or assignments. You do. You have a destiny that is wonderful and glorious and was planned even before you were knitted in your mother's womb. But it's likely not what you've been pushing and shoving and contorting yourself into. But there might be some things that God's like, well, yeah, like that was a gift I gave you. You've just been using it for the wrong thing. Now let's let's use it for the right purposes. Yeah? Mm. So good. So good. (laughs) 
Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will open unto you. Seek him and he will reveal himself to you. I think I just found it. I like, I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, well, this wasn't the one. I think it's this one now. Job 8, 5 is another good one. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will ruse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble. So prosperous your future be. So prosperous will your future be. He exalts the humbled. And he humbles those who have exalted themselves. So no matter where you are on your journey, whether you've been exalting yourself and you're like, I'm ready to not do it my way. Or you've been like, you know, surrendered, but not fully on fire for the Lord. I'm going to say a prayer shortly, which is the salvation prayer. And you can say it out loud with me and give your heart, give your life to Jesus, surrender fully to him, recommit to him to go all in and be on fire for him. And then I'll go into a further prayer. When you fully surrender to him and fully submit to him, it's in Christ. You can do all things that strengthen you. You're actually giving your life over to then be strengthened by him, to be reinforced by him. To the glory goes God. Um, and so when we know our authority in him, when we know our identity in him, oh, life gets so good. Life gets so good. Yes, we can command and demand atmospheres to shift. The same spirit, when you surrender and submit and invite the Holy Spirit in, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead will reside in you. That's some pretty powerful stuff, my friends. Okay, so if you're wanting to recommit to the Lord, if you're wanting to fully surrender, just open up to receive. This is just a, you know, when I open up my hands like this, it's like I fully surrender. I fully surrender to receive what God wants to bring through. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being so present today, so present today. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you. And we're about to go into this beautiful prayer for anyone that's wanting to recommit your lives to the Lord or surrender fully if you haven't done so already. Just you can either say this prayer or allow this prayer to wash over your heart and come into agreement with it. Like, yes, I agree and amen. Lord Jesus, I am tired of doing it my way. I am really tired of doing it my way. I fully surrender to you. I turn from my old ways. Forgive me for my sins. I take you into my heart. I fully surrender to allow you to make me anew. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please reach out to me if you want next steps or things that you can do. If you prayed that as a recommitment and you want to know, well, then now where? Like, I want to stay on fire for the Lord. It's really important um, to be around people that are on fire for the Lord, that are all in, that aren't um, playing it lukewarm. You really want to surround yourself with community. Get in a good Bible-based church. Surround yourself with community. Surround yourself with people that are on fire for the Lord. Rise up my daughters, my warrior remnant daughters. And I have a lot of different courses that are going on right now and a lot of different... Um, there's a retreat we have coming up in person. Myself and my bestie uh, sister in Christ, Katrina Ruth, we're also running a retreat in person at the end of the year called Anointed. Uh, there'll be Holy Spirit baptism. There'll be some deliverance. There'll be a lot of goodness. Holy Spirit will definitely be present. I have the Elizabeth Mantle, which is an amazing course and equipping course for mothers. Mothers who are wanting to train their children. It says in scripture to train your children. In the ways of the Lord. And this is what we're going to be doing. Elizabeth, by the way, was the mother of John the Baptist. And when Jesus was uh, cousins with John the Baptist, right? And so when Mary comes over and Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit was in John the Baptist in that moment. 
and John leapt in the belly and immediately Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Elizabeth was his mother. She was raising him as a spirit filled woman. Now, if you know anything about John the Baptist, he was a very, very bold, fiercely anointed man and anointed with the spirit of Elijah. Elijah was a prophet, right? Elijah was a prophet back in um, the there's chapters in Kings, right? And he was a prophet that was standing for the Lord in a time when, well, a lot of people were not. The The whole uh, of Israel was being overrun by Jezebel and Ahab. Well, not so much Ahab, but Jezebel and worshiping of Baal. And Elijah came up against that, right? And really was one of the first to come up against that and say, no, we are worshiping the Lord. And that's a whole nother beautiful story of, that unfolded and that spirit, that bold spirit. And he took it head on. He was scared, but he was anointed and infilled with the Holy Spirit. And that spirit of Elijah was then filling also, um, anointing, I should say, like it talks about it in scripture, how John the Baptist was filled with the spirit of Elijah or had the spirit of Elijah, not filled with it. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, but had the spirit of Elijah, which is like that bold, fierce anointing. And he basically was like, his preaching was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What, what does that mean? The kingdom of heaven is here. We can partner with the kingdom of heaven. We can partner with Jesus repent but you gotta turn away your old ways have to die your ego has to die you have to repent of your old ways you have to repent of who you used to be you have to repent of your sins repent his was a baptism of repentance but he said oh the one coming before me or I'm sorry the one coming after me the one coming after me I am unworthy to even tie his shoes the one coming after me he was talking of Jesus uh, you see, John the Baptist was the forerunner, paving the way for Jesus to come repent for the kingdom of heaven as at hand. And so in the Elizabeth Mantle, we're going to be talking about raising children, raising and training them in the ways of the Lord. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. These are the kind of children we want to raise, preparing for the acceleration of the maturing of the bride for the new wine that the that our Father God is pouring out right now, the anointings that he's pouring out, preparing us for the second coming. Oh, it's going to be such a good course. Okay. So if you're interested in any of that, <laughs> you just say yes, and I'll send you all the details. Um, so good. I love, I lo like, John the Baptist, one of my favorite stories. Like, oh, he's... <laughs> He's like, I am the sound of thunder <laughs> in a desert. What does that mean? Well, you know, when you're in a desert, spiritually, actually, the sound of thunder is the sweetest sound. Because that means water is coming. And Jesus is the living water that runs through you. He brings you to life. He makes your heart anew. And he makes everything in your life anew and afresh. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be things that need to be dismantled. There will. But restoration is inevitable when you follow the path. And when you run on that path, when you're on fire for him, mm, it gets really sweet. Okay, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much today for this sacred, sacred space that you created. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for every single, every single word that is for your good and your glory. Everything that I do, everything that I am is for you. All the glory to you, all the praise to you, Father. I just bless each and every woman that is listening in here now, has either joined live or is catching the replay. I bless her with a fresh revelation, with fresh anointing and pouring out from you, Father God, pouring out out your glory onto them. I bless them with peace and with vitality, with a new like vigor and excitement to be on fire for the Lord, with an excitement to be on fire for the Lord, Father God. I bless them with financial prosperity, with a deep peace that they have never known, but they can only know when they partner with the Prince of Peace, Jesus. I bless them. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father God, be the wall of fire around them. Be the glory within. Be the glory in their story. 
lead them, guide them, support them, because you say that you will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. Give them the willingness and the courage to lean into you and not the ways of the world. Give, the will- give them the willingness and the courage to lean on you and not on their own self-righteousness or self-seeking or self-exaltion. We know that each and every person here is the apple of your eye, treasured and chosen. And we thank you. We thank you for your one and only son that you sent for us to die on the cross for us, to cleanse us of our sins, to give us the ability to experience heaven on earth. And we pray this in your mighty name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hmm. In Christ, you are. Your identity, your authority resides in him. When you lean on that and not the way of the world, your life, uh, you will experience heaven on earth. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's in reach. You can reach out and grab it. All you need to do is fully submit and surrender. If this served you today, if this supported you today, please share it with a loved one. Tag someone that you feel or you feel guided to, led to, share it with or tag. And I'll see you soon. If you have any questions, you need support and next steps, you've just surrendered your life to the Lord, please message me. I love you. And Jesus definitely loves you too.